Tonight, a flooding tragedy. A broken hill man dies in wild waters overnight. And one of the last steps completed on a Port Augusta bridge duplication. From our 7 Spencer Gulf Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamein begins now. Good evening. A man in Broken Hill has drowned overnight after his vehicle entered flood waters and he remained trapped. Emergency services were able to locate the man's body but could not revive him. Our reporter Joshua Mercer has more from the area. Just after 10.30pm last night, emergency services were called to Menindee Road, 35 kilometres east of Broken Hill, following reports of a vehicle in flood waters. The road had been closed due to flooding from heavy rain in the region. Uh, some places of the city got 140 mils of rain. That's uh, more than half of our yearly average. It's more than we got for uh, the last three years. Police had been told a 56-year-old man drove into floodwaters and exited his Toyota Land Cruiser utility before being sucked into a pipe and becoming stuck due to the force of the flood water. Following inquiries, officers attached to the Barrier Police District with help from the SES located the man's body. He could not be revived despite their best efforts. A crime scene was established and an investigation into the circumstances surrounding the incident took place. The mayor saying the death will be felt by the whole community. It's the families that uh, uh, lose someone, uh, but everyone in Broken Hill feels very sad when it comes to uh, someone in our city dying so unfortunately or tragi tragically. A report is being prepared for the information of the coroner. A man accused of killing a 21-year-old woman has pled not guilty today at the Port Augusta Magistrates Court. The defendant allegedly murdered aged care worker Jasmine Kerr before hiding her body in a shallow grave near Hawker last year. He was unable to appear via court video link today after being admitted to a COVID-19 ward, his lawyer putting in the plea on his behalf. He will stand trial in the Adelaide Supreme Court in June. South Australia's mask rules will remain in place following a COVID-ready committee meeting yesterday. It was originally expected the rules would be relaxed following major changes announced last week. However, the committee decided it was still too soon. COVID Commissioner Grant Stevens told 5AA this morning health authorities are being cautious. I would expect that we're going to see changes uh, very soon, but you know, I need to follow the health advice. And uh, the strong advice yesterday was that we just hold for a little bit longer. Uh, now we're almost out of this. The committee is not expected to meet again until after the election this Saturday. The Deputy Premier says the construction of Port Augusta's new bridge will be completed next month. Work has now moved to the next phase, including construction of the road surface, parapets and railings. The Joy Belouche Bridge looking rock solid. The project reaching a major milestone with the last of 22 concrete pours completing the bridge deck. Enormous progress has taken place on this bridge. Uh, it is now structurally pretty well complete. Uh, it's actually about putting guardrails on, uh, getting the pedestrian access right. Like icing on the cake, the Deputy Premier says locals will also start to see the construction of the driving surface with bitumen to be poured soon. Next month, this bridge will be finished. All of the traffic will swap from the old bridge to the new bridge. Then the old bridge will have an upgrade. When the old bridge is brought up to modern standards, the traffic will then be split so both bridges have the desired two lanes of traffic before the end of this year. Whether a person is just a motorist going from east to west within Port Augusta, uh, whether travelling around the state or heavy vehicles going from Adelaide to, to Darwin, Sydney to Perth, this project is really going to deliver for all of them. The Deputy Premier saying greater accessibility for emergency services and reducing traffic bottlenecking was the reason the Liberal government undertook this project in its term in government. We were so pleased to get elected and then uh, start to deliver this project almost immediately uh, in partnership with the federal government. And I couldn't be prouder for the people of Port Augusta uh, who are seeing this bridge nearly complete. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Still to come tonight, the election call for both major parties to boost regional GPs. And the impacts of the European conflict hit Spencer Gulf farmers. I'll see you after the break. Welcome back. The SA branch of the country's peak association of doctors 
is calling on both political parties to do more for general practitioners across the state. The RACGP wants to see a grant and support program for doctors living in regional areas like the Spencer Gulf. It's a call for more help for the Spencer Gulf's general practitioners. The Royal Australian College of General Practitioners calling for all political parties to better attract and support young GPs to regional and rural areas. We would like to see increased training for uh, young doctors who are going to be heading to the rural and remote areas, specifically in areas like obstetrics, anaesthetics, surgery, emergency. While the RACGP admits general practice does fall mainly in federal jurisdiction, SA branch chair Dr Daniel Byrne says the state can still help alleviate pressure on them. Also saying South Australia can play a key role in reducing demand on our hospitals. 30 years ago, my generation, about 40% of medical students did general practice and now we're down to 12% of medical students wanting to choose general practice as their specialty. In a statement, Health Minister Stephen Wade says the Liberals signed a deal with GPs last month investing close to $200 million to attract and retain regional doctors. SA Best promising to help pay hex debts of doctors who move to the regions if they get the balance of power. We already know that doctors who are in their 60s are retiring and leaving towns without a doctor. That's happening now and it's only going to get worse and worse. SA Labor were contacted for comment but did not respond in time for our deadline. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The conflict in Ukraine is continuing to have lasting effects much closer to home. The price of grain is now reaching record-breaking numbers, along with other essential products impacting our region's farmers. The ongoing war in Ukraine driving up the prices of wheat to all-time highs. Limited access to the overseas market seeing a supply and demand issue. Ukraine is a, a bread bowl of, of that region and uh, when you knock out that sort of production or that supply, then there's going to be a shortage and then the, the price is lift. Ukraine and Russia account for nearly 30% of the world's wheat exports. Cut off from its supply, prices are skyrocketing. In Australian dollar terms, it's gone up from around about 400 Aussie dollars at the, uh, at the start of February to about $600 a tonne and above. And it's, and it's very volatile, it's changing. Farmers in the Ukraine now fighting for their country, unable to grow crops. What's happened over there with the conflict, there's farmers that aren't able to grow crops uh, and those that do are not able to e export it as because of the military conflict. So there's going to be a fair bit of hardship for those poor growers over there, those farmers. Mark Modra saying while the increased price of grain is good for wheat farmers, it gets tempered by the cost of input. Fertiliser and fuel prices also on the rise. Fertiliser has gone from traditionally around $500 a tonne to now over $1,600 a tonne. We are seeing uh, diesel prices uh, record levels now. Uh, that is directly uh, an impact of the fact that you know, Russia is a huge exporter of, of oil. It's been 15 days since Russia invaded Ukraine and the impacts are being felt around the world. Farmers will continue to keep a close eye on the market as the conflict unfolds. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The Wyala City Council is now seeking tenders from businesses to build new campground facilities at Fitzgerald Bay. It follows a similar upgrade to the showers and toilets at the nearby Point Lowly campgrounds. Our reporter Mark Zeta has the details. More upgraded camp facilities will now be placed in the Upper Spencer Gulf, with tenders now open for works at Fitzgerald Bay. The works include supplying and installing two sets of toilets and showers with matching shelter at the Fitzgerald Bay campground. Both will be designed to meet with Disability Discrimination Act requirements. In addition, the Wyala City Council is looking for the installation of dual barbecues and two accessible picnic settings at the campground. It's not the only area getting upgrades. Tenders are also available for works at the Douglas Point North Campground. The works include two sets of DDA compliant toilets with matching shelter and a barbecue with two accessible picnic settings. Earlier this month, similar works were conducted at the Point Lowly campgrounds next to the marina off Lighthouse Drive. Those works also saw upgraded toilets and showers. 
According to the council, the works are being done to bring the facilities up to standard for tourists who travel to the Upper Spencer Gulf. Tenders for the works must be lodged on the Tenders SA website by 2 p.m. on April 29. Businesses who are interested in applying can visit the SA Tenders and Contracts website. Stay with us after the break. Plans revealed for Port Lincoln's new weight reserve. And the Port Piri Croquet Club encourages more locals to tackle the hoops. I'll see you shortly. Hello again. The City of Port Lincoln held a community event to launch the new weight reserve concept plans. The project is assisted by state funding, aiming to create a recreational space for people of all ages. The community gathering for the big reveal of weight reserve's new concept plans. We've got a, a complete redesign of the weight reserve in Lincoln South. It's, it's a very important uh, thing that we're trying to do here, which is to upgrade the park with community input as to the design. The park seeing a spend of upwards to $750,000 for its new facilities. So we got uh, just over $330,000 from Open Spaces, a state uh, grant. Uh, so we're really pleased to be able to get state money to come and assist us. Weight Reserve will become home to a new adventure playground, new toilets and a soccer pitch. Lincoln Gardens primary students having their say on the design process. So it's really vital that the children have a voice in, in it and then they'll own it and engage and come and look after it. So really important. Other services also looking to utilise the reserve. Having toilets here and upgraded to the basketball courts with some play equipment, it will be really effective for our uh, new style of youth engagement moving forward. Yeah, we're engaging with Port Lincoln and hopefully the weight reserve is the first of a number of campaigns we can do uh, involving the community and also uh, SAPOL. The council is hopeful that the structure will be built before the end of the calendar year. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Yarta Pertley Art Gallery is continuing to bring national exhibitions to Port Augusta, but is now also showcasing more local artists. The popular gallery is keen to continue its highly successful retail space into the future. Port Augusta's art scene bustling with activity. The gallery is currently displaying a mixed media exhibition created by artists from the same family. Here behind me we have a family and country exhibition by Winnell McKenzie and her family. The multi-generational works aiming to give insight into themes such as cultural identity and attachment. Some of the exhibition's paintings are also for sale alongside items in the gallery's successful retail space. The retail space has been going for some time and it's something that we're looking at having throughout the whole year. The gallery starting last year to provide local artists with a space where they can earn income from their creative pursuits. Organisers say it has been a great success with more and more artists jumping into projects knowing they have somewhere to sell their art from. When we do have our tourists coming through, they have an opportunity to come by local Aboriginal art. With hopes the retail space will be a way for staff to connect with more up and coming artists from the region. It gets us to know the artist and where they want to head with their artwork. So it, it is a great two way conversation that we have with them. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Port Piri Croquet Club is calling for more members of the community to step up to the green and have a go at swinging a mallet. The club is opening its doors to anyone wanting to play, regardless of their age, mobility or skill level. It's a game anyone can play. Croquet has been played in Port Piri for nearly 100 years and the organisation would like its long tradition to continue for generations to come. The club is hoping the simplicity of the game will be able to entice new players to top up the Peary and Crystal Brook teams. There's eight playing today and the Crystal Brook have got more players, I don't know how many more. We have got a few more members but not as many as we'd like. The game is quite simple. All you need to do is hit your balls through the six hoops in the right order and finish by hitting them against the centre peg. You've got to get the ball through the hoop. Sometimes you can get two through it once in this game, you get a double, which means extra points for your team. Players can also knock their balls into the opponent's balls to stop them from getting closer to the hoop. Croquet is really um, a slow, steady game and you don't have to be really fit and athletic to play and it's good for people who are quite elderly and also little people. 
The club is also encouraging those living with a disability to come along and try the game. And also we have uh, golf croquet for people with disabilities and that is a lot easier than the association croquet. Those interested in playing should visit the Croquet Club next to the Piri West Oval on Wednesday and Thursday mornings. Christian Kominos, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. More petrol pain for locals. Christian Kominos will share the latest prices at the Bowser. And they'll have the weather details. I'll see you soon. Welcome back. Petrol prices have hit a record high after the United States decided to ban all of Russia's oil imports. The Australian federal government is now being urged to temporarily cut the fuel excise tax, which could save up to 44 cents per litre. With all the details and current prices, here's Christian Komonos with Fuel Watch. Drivers in the Spencer Gulf might want to consider an alternative mode of transport this week as prices continue to skyrocket. It's a sea of red across the board, with the cost of fuel nearly increasing by 30 cents in some parts of the region. Port Augusta and Broken Hill are feeling the brunt of the price spike at nearly $2.12 a litre. Port Lincoln not too far behind at $2.11. And you might want to postpone your Adelaide trip this weekend, with prices being the highest in the region, sitting at $2.20 a litre. The city seen a whopping 43 cent increase in just one week. Port Pirie showing the cheapest prices of unleaded, sitting at $2.06 a litre, but still seeing a 24 cent increase. And Kadena prices just sitting under $2.10 a litre. Drivers using diesel this week are in a worse situation, with every outlet selling a litre for more than $2.20. Port Lincoln drivers getting hit the worst, with diesel selling for $2.26. That's a 44 cent increase compared to last week's price. Across the border and Broken Hill was in a similar situation, with diesel selling for $2.25. And you'll be able to get the cheapest diesel in Port Augusta, Port Pirie and Kadena, with prices sitting around $2.20 a litre. Over to Autogas now, and Port Lincoln drivers are continuing to get slugged at the pump, with LPG selling for $1.32 a litre. That's a 16 cent increase from last week and you'll be able to fill up cheaply in Broken Hill, with their price sitting at $1.21 a litre. City drivers will get the benefit of the cheapest gas prices, as they didn't move from last week, selling for just under $1.10. Remember, these prices are the regional average and do not reflect one particular outlet. If you do see fuel for cheaper, then please let us know through our Facebook page. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. I'm filling in for Alex Sykes from behind the desk. It was a hot, humid and showery day for many spots across our viewing region today. Summer clearly isn't disappearing just yet. From 3pm, Kadena and Adelaide both reached 27. Woodnet and Broken Hill a degree warmer. Pulpiri topped 31. Wyala and Port Augusta was humid and a shower or two, a top of 30. Port Lincoln reached a max of 24. And Cooper Pitty was very hot and partly cloudy, with a region's high of 39 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, a cloud band with a trough over southern and central South Australia is triggering showers and storms, some intense. Clear elsewhere with a dry air mass. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Winds northeasterly 15 to 20 knots, seas at one metre, and south to southwesterly swell below one metre. A fire weather warning was issued for the northwest pastoral and west coast forecast districts, as well as a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of the mid north and riverland districts. Port Lincoln will be mostly sunny with a top of 25. Cleaver predicted max of 27. Woodner to reach 31 degrees. Wyala is set for a high of 28. Humid and mostly sunny in Port Augusta to reach 32 degrees. Kadena a mostly sunny top of 29. Port Piri mostly sunny and 31. Clare a degree cooler with 30. And Broken Hill to top 33 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now with those mostly sunny conditions continuing on Friday. Port Augusta and Woodner both to reach 30, Port Piri to hit 32 degrees, while at a top of 26, Kadena set for 28 degrees, Port Lincoln a high of 23, Broken Hill a sunny 30 degrees, Cooper Pitty to hit a max of 33. Some sun on its way this weekend, which is perfect timing, mostly in the 30s on Saturday except for Port Lincoln, which is set to reach 25 and partly cloudy. 
Adelaide and Kadena set for a max of 31. 33 degrees in Broken Hill and Port Pirie. Cooper Pedy and Port Augusta to reach a top of 35. Woodna to reach a max of 30. Woodna a partly cloudy 34 degrees. Looking at the forecast for Sunday now, Wyala, Kadena and Adelaide, all sunny and a top of 32 degrees. A degree warmer over the border in Broken Hill. Port Augusta and Woodna both 36. Port Lincoln a top of 27 degrees. And Cooper Pitty will have the region's max of 37. That's all the weather from me and all the local news for now this Wednesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have news and weather updates a bit later. But until then, enjoy your evening. The team and I will be back tomorrow with more local news. Good night.